God the Father wished that we were redeemed. It is Christ who became human and suffered for us, but was the Holy Spirit who urged forth to bring the hope to, to bring in the womb of the Virgin Jesus Christ, who by that very fruit that He has brought to Jesus Christ in person, we are saved. And that's why He said, For by the grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not from you. So our faith, our salvation come by faith in Jesus Christ alone. Not because we have done something, not because you go to church every Sunday, not because you don't eat meat on Friday, not because you, you know, try to do the best you can to help the church and tithe and whatever it is. That's nothing to do. You're not going to buy heaven. Heaven was bought by us, for us, by Jesus Christ. And that's why he said, and this is not from you. It is a gift from God. It is not your works. So no one may boast. Because people think, you know, we have a lot of Catholics today, that they think they are more holier than the Holy Father. And they know more, more than the Holy Father, the teachings of the church. Because they pick and choose, and they make excuses here and there, because they think that they are the church, that they are the one who can change things. Little we know that salvation comes to us only from the person of Jesus Christ, by his dying and by his rising. And then he continued here, for we are his handiworks. All of us knows that we are the creation of God. And God created us as the masterpiece of creation. And that's why when he created Adam, who knows that he is going to sin, he has already prefigured that in that Adam, he is going to send his son in the flesh. And so he created Adam in his own image. So that when Jesus comes, he will take that same form that God has created. And he created us so that by the works of Jesus Christ, he will prepare us in advance eh, by that very creation of Adam, that he has already the figure of Jesus in him, that we should live in them. That we live in the Trinity, that we live in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My dear people, the readings are beautiful. But how the readings are going to be applied? First and foremost, we need to have faith. And that faith is very important. Not faith because we are in the pews, singing praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, or raising our hand and saying the Amen. That's not faith. Faith is that you live what you believe. That once you live these doors, you're not going to play double. Either you are or you are not with Jesus. And that is why today we are seeing decline in our Catholic Church. Because we are a scandal to those who look at us. Because we're supposed to be the cream of the crop. We're supposed to be better people, good people. And many times we act opposite. How can we attract people to the faith when we are not compassionate, when we are not loving, when we are not just, when we are not truthful? And this is why today the church reminds us that we need to have that faith, that faith that we really live what we believe. But then if we really believe, we are going to sacrifice. And sacrifice means that you are going to master your body. If you don't master this flesh, believe me, you will be in trouble. For example, if I go to the doctors and say to me, I ask you to stop eating pasta and bread, what a disgrace, but they told me that. If you don't stop, you are going to have a heart attack, you are going to have sugar, or you're going to have a stroke. Now, select what you want. And I say to myself, she can say what she wants, I do what I want. Yet you have, a, you have a choice. And the same thing with us. We cannot allow this flesh to control us. Because this flesh is a weak in nature. And this flesh is attached to evil, whether you like it or not. All of us have those temptations. All of us have those inclinations. All of us have those moments in our life when we feel weak. And that's why we need to sacrifice. So after we have faith, and really faith that is true faith, that we call it a living faith, we need to sacrifice ourselves. And then alone, 
The third one comes around, and then alone we have and we find time for prayer. Sometimes we find people say, Father, I have no time to pray. I am so busy. Well, let me remind you, if you have a hobby that you really love, you will find time for it. Sunday afternoon, God forbid, your wife tells me to do something because there is football you want to watch and that is your idol. There are other things that we do, the gym and this and this and this. We find time for everything. And that's why it is very important that we have a deep faith, an authentic faith, that asking us to sacrifice sometimes even time and sometimes even pleasure. And then we enter into prayer, the dialogue between God and me. And then we find time for God because without Him we cannot survive. Without Him there is no quality of life. Without Him there is no hope. Without Him there is desperation. Without Him we are no God. You see the process of the spiritual growth? That's why many times we remain children in the faith. And sometimes we say, oh, they are angry at the priest, they are angry at the system, they are angry at the Holy Father. If you really are a person who really has faith deep in your heart, that means you live what you believe, then you are going to challenge yourself. Because it's not me, but Him has to live in me. As St. Paul said, it's not me who lives, but Christ lives in me. And if Christ lives in you, you are going to do what Jesus asked us to do. Early in the morning, he will run to the hills to be with God alone. Because we need that time with God. Because there I call it the pumping station. Where we are going to get that necessary strength to really fight the situations that we find ourselves in. Today the church is celebrating the fourth Sunday of Lent. And today remind us of that joy, that joy that we are happy that Christ came to be our Redeemer. You say, Father, you are happy that Christ died? Well, that's what we're seeing on Saturday night, on the vigil of Easter. Many of you are so escaped, uh, you are so afraid of that vigil. I remind you that that vigil is a renewal of our faith. When we say in that exultus, in that beautiful prayer, when we bless the candle, O oh, happy fault of Adam. O oh, happy fault of Adam. We say that God permit and thank God that God permit that Adam sin because Adam's sin brought forth our sin.